Hello everyone, and welcome to another video showcasing everything. Starting off here on the login screen, I got some intro music, which I thought was one of my favorites I've ever heard. That's not the original theme, it's the live orchestra. In my opinion, it is ten times better. The piano hits in it, and it just reminds me of the good old, like, um, Halo 2 kind of piano days. But in this video, I'm going to showcase a lot of different things and kind of dive into every little thing to kind of give you a brief overview now that everything's getting closer and closer and more up to date. You will be able to pick all your races, just so you know. Um, the class is locked into this. This whole screen will look different. There we go. So, as you can see, I have music, as you can hear, in all the different um, areas and whatnot. I'm going to turn that off just for the video's sake, so you don't have to listen to it. But all the sounds are there. As you can see, I do have all these quests up here. I mean, all these um, auras up here. These are going to be hidden. This is just for me to see. It's just to kind of go over making sure all my spells are working as intended, um, which are my skills. So as you can see, you start off. You're level 3 when you start. Your health, your prayer, all that stuff is the, sta the same. All of combat is there and implemented. Um, going over each thing. Let me get my speed on. So we do have mining. Mining is fully done except just the sound effects. You're going to need your pickaxe out. You're going to get your reputation, your leveling. That whole entire process is all completely done. Um, the only thing that I did not add was gem locations of the gem rocks. Obviously they're not in the free to play worlds. Um, but I was, or areas so to speak. I was thinking about adding them. Um, Got to fix a little sheathing issue right here with that pickaxe. That's no problem. But uh, I decided not to. You know, so I just have the normal ones everywhere. These rocks are going to be get um, retextured, so they're going to look a lot closer to how they actually look, and not like the WoW version of it. Um, as you might have noticed, a lot of the NPCs have been upgraded with HD models. Like I now have a camel, and not the um, Baron's kind of. Uh, I don't even know what they were called before. Um, yeah. Next one we're going to do is dive into wood cutting. Let's go right here. Um, each one of these skills like this, the wood cutting and mining, you are going to need to have your axe kind of in your main hand for it to work. As you can see, I'm just using this animation. I got to tweak it up just a little bit so it doesn't stop looping. This is the wood cutting. And these skills work as they would in RuneScape. The higher level you are, the more likely you are, the faster you are to acquire the logs, the ore, and so to speak. Now for woodcutting, um, ignore these, I was just testing something. Now for the woodcutting, I've added all of the members trees in kind of random locations. I had to do this for fletching, um, as I do have fletching fully updated with every single, um, you know, so everything that you can make. So anyways, you're going to find these locations. I've added members trees like maple. You know, I have uh, magic logs somewhere. I have teak and mahogany. Um, they're kind of in these areas. They're just placeholders for now. Their locations are not permanent. Um, it's just, just for the time being, just so that way for this alpha, you at least have a way to access these trees. Um, and again, the higher woodcutting you are, the faster you are to get the logs, especially if you have a certain axe equipped, it's, uh, it, it's also faster as well. Um, going into the next one, which is fish fishing. So I have the fishing locations all set up of all the free-to-play spots, requiring all the right stuff, everything you need. 
Um, obviously, I just have to fix this animation right here uh, and change the animations a bit. That's the only thing I haven't really touched that much. But you'll see all of these different uh, spots all over. Um, what I am thinking of doing, and I'm still tweaking the idea of adding some members fishing spots once your fishing gets higher up. You know, because I think the max for free to play, I can't remember, is uh, swordfish or lobster. So I might add the higher level ones up, like shark, just for those that want to grind it out in the alpha and, uh, you know, get that higher level food. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I have some locations in mind of where I'm going to do it. But uh, kind of like what I did with the members, um, members trees, so to speak. But, but I haven't decided yet. Um, next is cooking. As you can see, I have all this stuff here. Again, this stuff will all be hidden. This is just for my sake of testing things out. Um, but cooking, I have everything in here. When you start off at level 1, I've added some, again, soda ash and sinew for the crafting and fletching um, stuff. Um, but as you level up cooking, it works all as intended. Things unlock at the right level. Um, and it does have all of the members' food in it as well. The, there is some pies and pizzas. Uh, I just have like the basics versions. I didn't really dive into each specific pie, each specific pizza. Um, that'll be something for like the beta or the official release. Uh, next we have is prayer. Um, so as you can see, prayer, again you started off with the 10 prayer. Man is going to be the new prayer. Prayer spells, they work as intended. And um, yeah, it, it, this prayers was actually pretty easy to make. Uh, just reworking some of the WoW spells that were similar to the idea of it, changing some numbers around, the names, the icons, simple stuff. Um, and now we have fully working prayer. So it's going to be interesting to see how that's going to work into um, combat and into the wilderness, which is what I'm really excited for. Um, next is um, melee. I can show you. Well, I can't show you every piece so far because, again, I want you to kind of see some of this stuff on your own and explore. But I will show you all the bronze. That's no problem at all. Um, looking at the inventory, as you can see, we have the 28 slots right there. And uh, looking into it, I have all of the melee armor sets done. So as you can kind of see them right there. Let's see, let's look up a full helm. So as you can see, I have all of that stuff done. And if you look closely, if you can see, I have all the stats added as well. And so all of the stats for all my melee, ranged, and magic weapons and armor for free-to-play are all done. So I'm really interested to uh, see how this stuff all works out in combat because I've only been the one testing it. And, you know, <laughs> I need some more input. But um, so all of that's done. Uh, all the weapons, all the different melee weapons. There's some stuff I didn't include, like claws, for example. I'm not going to include a claw just yet, maybe in the beta. Um, going into the next category here is agility. As you can see, we have this little bar up here. And this is the run bar. As you can see, my speed is a little faster, so let's make my speed normal. And let's pull up my run button, which is going to be on the action bar. So this is the normal walking speed. This is the equivalent to the walking speed um, scaled of this map to what the old school RuneScape map is. And as you can see, it's going to drain. And the more you level up agility, the more you're going to be able to run. So I'm really curious to see how this is going to play off in wilderness combat. Um, it's just going to be an interesting take on seeing people being able to outrun other people just because they have a higher agility. Um, we'll just we'll see how that goes. Um, but that works as intended. You can turn it off again by pressing it, and it's going to start recharging. To add to the agility, I have changed the courses a little bit from the last time. They're no longer going to be quests. You're basically going to go through the whole course. I'm just going to show you Draenor real fast. There's three others. And you get to the end right here. You're going to press this game object. And it's going to give you your stuff. And it's going to push you right down at the bottom. 
Um, I kind of like this method the best because then it's then you're not going to be able to easily get back up. You know what I mean? Obviously, I can I'm flying, but it works just like that. And um, yeah, we'll we'll see how long these courses take you. And uh, yeah, we'll give it a whirl. Uh, next is going to be crafting. Again, this is a very kind of simple one. Everything is all done. Everything is organized. Um, everything you can possibly need is done um, in crafting. All the different gems, all the different rings you can make, everything. I have also added um, some of these members gems. And, um, you know, Ellis right here, you know, I, let me, where is, oh, there they are. So if you look, I have the normal gems, but I've also added some of the, um, uh, what are these, um, the mining gems, I'm so sorry, Jade, Opal, Topaz, and if you look, I've also added some Dragonstone, Zenite, and Onyx. Now these obviously cost a lot. These pricing right here is equivalent to the Grand Exchange pricing of these items at the moment. Um, so this is like 10 million, 1,000 gold is 10 million, 300 gold is 3 million. Um, I have the, the items made for these. Um, and like the stats made for the items for the Dragonstone, so it's going to be, didn't have a way to, to gather them yet, you know, in some of these creatures, because a lot of these creatures in this, the free-to-play area doesn't drop these items, you know, you can't acquire them, so I just kind of added them in here just for the sake of, if players get that high and are grinding it out in the alpha, they can, you know, they can get them, have a way to acquire them, give me some feedback. So, uh, yeah, um, next is smithing, smithing is just like crafting. Um, pull it up here, give me just one second. But smithing is, yeah, all done as well. Everything's in there, gives you the right, um, experience. I mean, pretty straightforward skill. Shouldn't need to dive into it too much, but everything's all there. Next, we have rune crafting. This was a very interesting one to make. Um, so... This is the fire author, obviously. The one thing I have different is that it's not going to teleport you anywhere. You're going to be able to do what you need to do at the altar right here. I didn't really want to add another spot to teleport to. I just didn't like having to do that ten times. Um, I just thought it was unnecessary. Maybe I'll do it for like a release. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I haven't really quite decided that. But anyways, the... Air altar is over here. You get your 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 essence. You get going. Pretty self-explanatory -ex skill. You know these are all over. Now to also add into rune crafting, you may have noticed um, if you're taking a peek as I've been flying around, I've added the altars for all of them, um, just for the sake of a way to acquire the runes um, in this alpha release. So you have the cosmic altar. I've added the Law Author in um, Falador right here. Um, and it's something I didn't also show you as well was the Redwood Tree from Woodcutting. I've added that right here as well. Not that I believe anyone's going to get 90 Woodcutting, but but if you do, <laughs> well, uh, you at least have a spot to do some Redwood chopping. Um, I thought that was a good location for it to kind of make these cities more more things in them for this, um, you know, for this uh, alpha release. Um, so yeah, the body altar is right there, the nature altar is on Karamja, um, and then the blood and death are somewhere in the wilderness. I won't showcase it just yet, it's going to be for you to explore. Um, and uh, to also add, I do have it to where once you hit the correct level, um, it starts creating double the runes, triple the runes of what it is you're rune crafting. Um, so it, it is going to be a little bit faster. Next, we have fire making. This is extremely self-explanatory. Um, right here is the fire making tab. All the fires appear when you hit the right level. The one thing that I did from RS3 was I did add um, like bonfire boost. So once you create a fire, let me just get some logs here. Um, oh, I have some perfect. So once I create this fire, let me move to a spot. If all has been working so far, Obviously, this uh, name of this spell is going to be different. But what I do have it is you can get campfire boost that lasts for 30 minutes. 
I thought this was a, just a good incentive to train um, fire making and to give players a little extra boost. And I, I liked what they did in RS3 with it. You know, it just gave it just a benefit to, to, your, to your everyday life, you know. Before, fire making was pretty much pointless. Um, but now at least it has a little benefit. And obviously the higher level logs you burn, the better the health boost. And uh, yeah. Uh, moving on is fletching. This is one of those kind of pretty self-explanatory skills. Everything's fully, um, fully in it. All the different arrows, all the everything, all the different bows, it's all right there. Um, at the end of this uh, of the video, I'll do a showcase macro, and uh, which which pretty much brings all of my skills to level 99, and you can kind of just see all the information. Um, moving on, farming. Farming is one that I might have ready for the alpha. I'm not quite sure yet. I'm still toying with the idea of it and the concept of it. Um, like as you can see right here, I can press the guav leaf. Obviously, this is going to make sure I have the right stuff in my inventory for this to even happen. And this speed is not going to be this fast, nor will it even look like this. This is just for my testing purposes. Um, but then again, I think this is going to be the concept. It's going to just grow just like this, not be interactable. And then when it's done, it'll be interactable. You'll be able to do this a few times, a, a random amount of times between, you know, however many times it works. Get the guam leaf and then the game object. This is what this is called. Oh, right there. Perfect. It will reset itself. And then the other one will appear. So still toying with that concept it might be ready it might not if I have it ready um, you'll see that I do have more patches kind of all over I've added these just for the sake of um, adding farming into the alpha and into this area you know to kind of pause my other conversation what I'd like to do is have everything all of the concepts uh, mechanics done of all the skills done in the free-to-play area so then afterwards, everyone can test it, bug test it, see what's working, see what's broken, while I'm creating the map for the whole entire rest of the world, creating the quest for it, and some of the items, you know. But if I have all the core mechanics figured out, all the skills figured out, then it's just like I can have it all ready for the alpha and, and, um, and the beta. And you guys can be testing it out for me, let me know what's working, what doesn't work. And it kind of just brings, it also just brings a little bit more content, um, having all these, all these different stuff, you know, like the maple, the willow, I mean, the maple, the, the magic trees right here. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so farming's, farming's a maybe. Farming is, I'm still, still tweaking it. Um, it's, it's not last on my to-do list, but also not first. Um, let's see. Next is we're gonna dive into Slayer. Slayer, I'm just getting ironed out right now. Um, as you can see, I just added myself right here. Um, lucky me. Uh, and things that you can buy with Slayer points. Um, I I added just a rune pouch, a seed box, an herb sack. Um, obviously they're gonna work as intended. Obviously you'll be able to. Um, just one second here. All right, sorry about that. So uh, obviously you'll be able to unlock these. They're not tradable. As soon as you do, you can throw them right in your backpack. And as you can see, you can't access your bags in your backpack. This is set up for this reason, so that way nothing can be modified. So once you can add these three to your backpack, you'll always have them on your in your daily travels. Um, I just thought it was kind of a neat concept for it, and just just for me to kind of test out that and see see how it goes and what I think. Um, as you can see, there's the Slayer, Slayer Master. I've added a bunch of different um, ones to it from the last time. I also have the Edgeville Slayer Master as well with the higher level quests. Um, once you hit level 40, you'll be able to accept those from uh, Vanaka. I don't know how to pronounce her name, but anyways, you get the idea. Um, this creature is probably not going to stay the same. I just chose the RS3 Slayer Master name and location. Just something as a kind of a placeholder. Um, yeah. So there's that. Um, Hunter. Hunter is something that is pretty much last on my to-do list. Maybe the second to last. Uh, it's hard to figure out what benefit it brings. Um, other than just time-wasting content. Which is still, obviously, I'm going to have it. 
but in terms of alpha testing, it's there's not much stuff in free to play that I can add for Hunter. You know, like locations, areas, you know, Puro Puro, the, the implings, you know. If anything, I just add the random implings across the map and uh, just have them all be allowed, um, like have them all, but just modify the levels to where you don't really need a level for each one, but just make them scarce. Um, just different ideas I'm toying of. This was going to be one of my hunter areas I was thinking about adding right here because it's kind of useless. Um, it's a little bit close to a bank, so it's kind of not the, you know, not the hardest skill to train. Um, but we'll see. Haven't really quite figured that out yet. Uh, next is magic. Um, as you can see, magic has their own magic tab with all the different spells and locations. Um, but it also has a, which for some reason it's not showing up, so I'll have to find that in a second. But I also have a magic enchanting um, tab that does all of the, um, you know, all your rings, amulets, it turns them into the correct ones. So let me just do my showcase macro now. I believe that's what I need to do to acquire it. As you can see, that does a lot of crazy stuff. It put, puts me at level 126, unlocks all my stuff. Um, now here we go. So this is the enchanting part. Um, obviously for these bolts, they do very special stuff in the game when enchanted. I'm probably not going to have that for the alpha, but I just wanted to get the items made and get all the spell working done for them. But as you can see, you can make all these items from the previous ones. Same concept here. I am going to have the teleportation um, items added to these items. Um, but yeah. I just do very fast to kind of just go through the previous ones, like fletching. There's all the items in there. Um, again, everything is fully updated. The stats for it, um, the defense, the attack, all of that. All of my stats are done. Um, so we're just going to wait and see how it turns out. Um, I got one grind, uh, grind leaf. I could turn into a clean one. All of the potions, again, are figured out. Some of them are not done, like anti-poison, for example, anti-fire, for example, you know. This just requires very specific stuff, and um, they, it, they're kind of not first on my to-do list. You know what I mean? There's a lot uh, more st more pressing matters. But the basic stuff is done. You know, energy potions, your attack potions, your defense strength, prayer, stuff like that. Crafting, again, everything's in here. Stats are all updated. The, the requirement is all updated for them. The defense, I'm really excited to have people try these out and just see how they work in combat it's I'm really looking forward to it um, what's the next one cooking again all the items are in here and as you can see I have added all of the members ones as well I just haven't added in where to where to fish at where to fish the fishing spots for some of these items yet um, so we'll get there uh, what else is there rune crafting as you can see it shows all the runes right now because I use the macro with how it's supposed to level in game, the other spell will get deleted, so you won't even see that. Uh, smithing again, same thing, everything's all done. Fully added, fully there. Um, claws are there, but haven't added the stats to them. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to have them. But, um, just to keep the list going on, uh, just touch jewelry, the ranged weapons, and ammo, as you can kind of saw. Um, that stuff is all done. Um, it's just on my notes right here, so I'll just take another quick look at it. Uh, there is no stats with the, that go along with the bell. Um, and it's all about the the um, arrows that you use. You know, so that's going to be very interesting to see how the how the stats correlate with each other. Um, dragons. All right, now we're getting into some of the fun stuff. Um, as you can see, I have to fly very high up. And uh, for those that were paying and following along um, before I touched dragons, I have added water boundaries all over now. Um, this took quite a while to do as each of these kind of things had to be placed up to kind of block that from happening. And of course, you can cross the bridges. Um, but yeah, so now you won't be able to traverse on the water basically where you can't traverse in RuneScape. 
Um, so I've upgraded the Dragon models. Um, as you can see, they look a lot cleaner. I'm still uh, wanting to adjust the sizing, I think, of it. I think they're a touch too big. Um, but what I do, obviously, Free-to-Play only has green dragons. So what I did do, just for this sake, I did add some blue dragons down here. Um, I was thinking about adding red dragons and black dragons, but again, I haven't quite decided yet. Um, I will show one of the bosses, which is Anixia's Lair, for those that are WoW nerds that know. I've added the King Black Dragon. Um, haven't done any of the mechanics for him yet, and the stats for him yet, but that's no problem. That won't take long. Um, and if you've also noticed, it is PvP um, still in the area. So, you'll be able to PvP inside of that, that, that uh, dungeon. The dungeons are all set up as well um, in the wilderness. Lava dragons I have to change. I'm not going to showcase too much of the wilderness because I just don't want to spoil it, but I will just do some flybys to give you some idea um, of where everything's at. And while I'm on this topic, what I will show you is I don't know if you've noticed this sword appearing and disappearing, um, which I'm very, very, very excited about. So WoW is all multi-combat. And for those that don't know RuneScape and only know WoW, uh, when you're in WoW, you can always fight any creature, a hundred of them at a time. Well, RuneScape has different areas based on single and multi. And we got it to work, um, which is very, very exciting. So out of all the multi and single combat zones, you'll only have you'll be only be able to have one creature be engaged with you. So like just for example, when I dive into these cows areas, they're gonna um, only one can attack me. These are aggressive just for the sake of me testing this stuff out. But even if I go near others, it doesn't matter. Only one will attack me and kill I kill it. That was that's that's pretty big for me to add. I've also added and changed the leash distance, which is like how long it chases you after you engage in combat, to fit RuneScape more. Oh, we do have that. That's interesting. I gotta look into that one. Um, but as you can see, it evades uh, from a much shorter distance than you were if you were in WoW. If you were in WoW, you could have ran all the way down here, and it would still be following you. Um, let's see, to go into the next one, construction, I'm just going to answer those questions now. I am probably not going, I can just say this, I am 99.9% .9 not going to have construction for the alpha, and I don't even know for the beta. That's a, that's a maybe, that's going to require a lot more theory crafting on executing it well. Um, one of the biggest issues I have um, trying to brainstorm is layering and phasing. You know, RuneScape, you just hop worlds. When someone is in your area uh, and you want to kill those creatures that he's killing, you just say, fuck them, and just hop the worlds. So what I do want to see is how I'm going to fix that. Whether there is, have a little pop-up with a phasing screen that you can pick your layer based on the world. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, so not quite sure, but it also comes into play when you have a um, house. And everyone has to have their own house. So we'll uh, got to brainstorm that one. Um, next, we have, let's see, the HD models. Yes, as you can might have seen, a lot of these models have been updated um, to give the more, you know, just up-to-date look. Um, the humans are all done, but some of these creatures are all done. And just trying to find the right model, like Antco. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Antco. That was, the, to me, this is the, one of the ones that this makes me laugh the most looking at them. But uh, they work. They work for now. Um, you may have noticed everything's missing in combat. It's just because I have certain stuff enabled, so that stuff doesn't show. Um, moving down the line. Let's see. Questing. Oh yes, we can dive, dive. As you can see in the mini-map over here, I have quests pretty much all over. I have all the free-to-play quests added. All of them except three of the newest ones that they added in the past like five years. But as you can see, they're all here. They all work as intended. 
I have also added some members quests, like for example, in order to unlock Curb Lore, I added the Druidic Ritual quest right here. You'll see this little patch of dirt. <laughs> That's where the X marks the spots. Um, so yeah, uh, the quests are unlocked all over. And the neat thing about that is doing all the quests to get into the Champion Skill to unlock Dragon Slayer. Is my, my uh, cute little quest icon. You need to get the required quest points. Um, so yeah, so the quests are working as intended. They are all over in these areas. You'll see them throughout. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see how that goes. Uh, for now, just for the sake of getting something out there so people can start testing, the, the conversations look like this. You know what I mean? It's going to take me probably, I'd say, up to a month, maybe a little bit less, to actually do them in the style that I'm about to show you. I tested it out with Hans down here just to kind of learn the gossip a bit more. But this process right here takes quite a while. It's not easily executable as, as I would like. And so um, I will have this method set up for all of them all over the world. But for just now purposes, it's, it's not. It's not. Uh, let's see, moving down. Oh, guilds. Uh, guilds are going to be exciting. Um, I am going to have guild banks. I think this is going to be a neat concept to add. Um, obviously only accessible in, I'm thinking, the Grand Exchange and Falador, but we'll see. But a cool thing that I added that um, you can explore is I did add Party Pete's little room in there. I don't want to dive into it and kind of show it, but from this little distance you can see the flooring. Um, it looks pretty cool. I'm just excited for people just to explore and see things. I've added some hidden hidden Easter eggs all throughout the map. Uh, for those that are, you know, kind of watching that, watch me do this every day, because I do usually stream it in a Discord every day. They uh, uh, they know some of these areas, but it'll be exciting to see what people care, people find. Um, and there will be some achievements. Uh, just to kind of look down here, as you can see, the bar is a little different. The buttons are a little different. The icons are a little different. Um, oh, the achievements is not working. But um, let me see. Well, at the end of the video, I'll... Uh, Log out, create a new character, and achievements should be working. But as you can see, I have all the achievements there. I have all these buttons here to do what you need. Um, yeah. Let's see. As you have noticed, all of my cursors have been updated with the icons of the skill. So, like, woodcutting has that little tree icon. When you get farther away, it goes gray. Um, the only thing that I was kind of thinking about was RuneScape doesn't have, like, a cursor icon. It's just your mouse icon. So I thought it would be really funny to just just to just just go the dragon scimitar way and just turn it into a dragon scimitar for all of my very very old school um, I can't remember which app it was that people did that for but uh, I just decided not to do that but like as you can see the the attack icon is what the skill icon looks like um, I will turn music back on but just so you know it is there there's a bunch of different songs in there I'm gonna add a bunch more. I just added in, uh, I think, 20 or so just for the sake of getting something started and, and figured out of how to do it. Um, and then dueling. Dueling, of course, will only be allowed in the duel arena. Um, obviously, it's changed now in, in the old school RuneScape. You know, duel arena is no more. But WoW has this really nice duel, duel kind of functionality. Um, very easy to, to use and whatnot. And so... I figured it gives some life back to the duel arena, um, where you can be testing out all your combat stuff here with other players and not, uh, you know, not worry about dying. Um, so this would be pretty cool to see. I, I feel like it will be pretty active. Like I'll, I won't have dummies and training dummies. Um, if I do, I'll actually add them in this area, but I don't think so. Um, yeah. Um, the main training area, uh, arena is obviously a dead, a dead thing. I just added it kind of just for the looks of it. I don't really have any plans to add the mini games to it. Maybe I can add something kind of cool up here. Um, you know, but, uh, for now I just, I just don't know. Um, I don't want to dive into too much of the map stuff. I've been done that in the past and I really feel like having people explore the map would be a lot better. Um, a lot more fun. As you can see, the wilderness music kicks in. Um, 
but I will take a quick peek into all the dungeons. Um, all of the dungeons are added. All of the creatures are added in the dungeons. All of the loot from all the creatures are added. As you can see, you can gain it. Um, experience uh, with hit points on each kill. It doesn't do it based off hit. It just does it off what the hit points experience would be if, if you just kill that monster in RuneScape. So it is equal to it. It's just not based upon damage. Um, you know, there's Vinaka down there. But yeah, all the loot for all the creatures in this is all fully done and implemented um, to exactly what the loot tables are. Um, coming back up. Let me turn that video off. Sound. Uh, um, all right. Let's see. Next, dying in the death chest. So, what I will do is see if this works. I think I'm gonna make a new character for this real fast. So. This concept still needs to be ironed out, but essentially, I think these guys can kill me, right? Yes. Or somebody can kill me. Revive at Lumbridge, and it looks like my chest is not spawning, but I did have a chest that would spawn with all your stuff in it. So that I do got to figure out why that's not working, but I do that at a, at a obviously, later time. Um, but anyways, as you can saw, as I, as I died, you can, you, you spawn yourself right here. There is no, like, release spirit like you would normally have, um, in WoW. You're going to spawn right here. And the death chest did work as intended. For some reason, it's not working, so it's kind of unfortunate for the video. But you would keep your top three uh, most expensive items. The rest would go in the chest. And you can go back and loot the chest. Or after, or after five minutes, I do have it to where um, it's going to send it to you in your mailbox, which I'm still toying with that concept. I thought I could be a little bit forgiving with the alpha, um, but we'll see. But to dive into combat training. So this is not based off of her damage, right? Um, I'll do attack just for now just because attack is a lot higher. But it's based off of your XP rates if you were training for an hour in Old School RuneScape versus an hour of WoW. I did a whole bunch of ratioing to figure out what the rates would be um, of the increased difference. Obviously, attack is a lot higher because that's for my testing purposes. But the normal stuff will be like this. Um, and as you level it up, it slowly gets better to a rates that are equivalent with the, with the average training rates of... Um, what do you call it, of Old School RuneScape. Um, I might redo this for like the beta version or for something later on to make it based off of the damage, um, but that is going to require a lot more, you know, kind of theory crafting. This was the best I could do for just, for just, you know, for me for not right now. Um, and as you can see, my stats level up just like they would. Strength's obviously taking a lot longer because it's a lot short. It's a lot um, less experience. But yeah, so all the training of your different skills, range training. Um, if I had it, uh, you're using any range damage, obviously. Um, that all works. Um, next, what we're going to talk about is uh, mounts are not going to be added for those wondering. Um, I have no intention of making this a pay-to-win game. Um, it's just not... You know, this is a huge passion project for me. You know, I've loved both teams my whole entire life. Um, you know, I think most people that are watching this video, you're obviously attracted to it because you love WoW and you love RuneScape, or maybe you're just interested in the concept and the idea of it. But both games, I feel like, have been a dramatic impact in my life. Um, and I really want to say that those games have touched many other lives as well. And so... The gaming world where it's at today, every single thing you can think of is a pay to win. And I'm doing everything in my power to not make it happen. Um, the only thing that I'll have that you can buy that are going to be untradeable is party hats. And they're going to be kind of based upon like a donation amount to keep the server up and running. 
That is the only thing that I'm going to have. There's nothing where you can buy gold, no RS3, uh, pay to win system, no Blizzard WoW tokens, none of that, none of that stuff. The only thing you'll be able to buy, and it's going to be in Drainer Market, is party hats. It's just to kind of showcase to others that, uh, you know, you, you supported the stream, or supported the um, development, you supported the uh, the server, you know. It's I figured it's a, it's a good way to do it for at least let me raise some money to keep these things going. Because um, some of these things are quite expensive, and some of this stuff I have to hire people to help me with. And, uh, you know, they cost money. Um, but that's it for anyone wondering. That's the only thing that you're going to be able to buy. Party hats are going to be untradeable. Um, maybe in the very, 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 very far future, I can make them untradeable and, and remove the concept of it and see how it affects the market. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I have no reason to. I, I really want to stay true to my word here and stick with it. Um, let's see. Moving down the line here. I pretty much touched all I really want to touch for this video. Um, as you guys can all have seen so far, things are moving quite along. I'm really hoping to get an alpha release here in a month. Um, you know, I things are moving fast. Um, all of the gear outfits for Magic um, is done. I'll just show you very quick. And uh, it's a seven, like these right here. Like, I added all the magic stuff so far. Still got to finish a few others. The rain stuff is what's, what's enough to come. These take a little bit longer than you would think. There's a lot of, uh, WoW has a very intricate system that they used 20 years ago, you know. And for those wondering, this is using the 3.3.5 client, which is the Wrath of Lich King client, which is extremely old. So their systems and methods that they do things back then was best at the time. But, of course, now there is a million times better things and programs to use, but not for you know, this old stuff. Um, did my achievements appear? No, it did not. Looks like I'm having an achievement issue. Um, but this is pretty much it, guys. I touched all my topics I wanted to talk about. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me, ask me, talk to me. I'm an open book about it. I'm pretty much always streaming um, this every day. It's just my development in the Discord of it. Um, feel free to hop in, feel free to reach out, feel free to chat with me. Uh, I'm really open to all discussions on pretty much about all of it. Oh, as you can see right here, this is what I've used for my, my uh, I call them a ghost gate. It blocks the, um, the movement in and outside of things. Um, yeah, Mezzer's Maze, didn't really show that, but the monsters are all in it. You know, Karamdra's all done, Elvrag's all in here, I won't, I won't show you guys, but everything's all there. Um, one thing else I didn't sh uh, show, and I'm kind of just going into it, is Lizardmen. These are the, uh, to get Zer, Zer, I don't know how to pronounce it, Zerkin fabric, um, to make some mage armor. But, uh, yeah, I think that's it, guys. Um, that's all I got. You guys have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching, and appreciate it. Bye.